Good morning. I'd like to welcome all of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as we come together to worship God and praise God's name. One of the words I learned in the history that only belonged to God was all. Did you know that? All only belonged to God that could not be used anywhere else, but over the years, it has been changed. So we often hear people say, awesome, right? For anything that's, you know, that's good and surprising and wonderful. Um, and I was thinking this week, I felt this awe in many times, you know, many times when I saw the signs of spring flowers all of a sudden, you know, um, the buds on the tree all of a sudden, and then the birds, like the sounds of birds, I mean, they became so active and so, you know, catching sound tunes. Um, so, you know, there were moments of awe, like, wow, these guys know when to come out. And these guys know when to sing and when to have babies. These are, these are amazing order of God's creation and it, it makes us have that awe and wonder about God, right? So I hope that during this worship service, you will feel that awe in the presence of God and you will be touched by the presence of God and the spirit that you have this feeling, a sense of awe and wonder in your heart. Welcome all of you. Well, we have a couple of people celebrating birthdays, um, Bennett Parcel and Paul Blackaba. Happy birthday. <laughs> um, I want to let you know that today is a souped up Sunday um, and we have amazing casseroles. So please stop by um, to, to grab some and then have a conversation with friends and you know, and have a sense of awe there too. Um, and there are many events that are upcoming, so please refer to the bulletin. Now let us bring our hearts and minds and souls to really feel grounded and centered in the spirit and love of God.
Good morning. Good morning. My name is Paul Blackadar. I'm the liturgist for today's service. And I want to thank Donna, Don, Donna Downs for filling in for me last week. I should have been here last week, but I forgot. <laughs> so I'm here today. So please stand as you are able to join in the call to worship. The suffering servant becomes the healing source. The suffering servant becomes the source for himself. The crucified one is raised to new life. Let us sing together our hymn of praise. Crown him with many crowns. Number 327 in your hymnal. share them with him to unburden ourselves. Yeah. 
Please join in the prayer of confession. Lord, sheep may live. We are part of the flock. We are part of Christ's body. In Christ we find wholeness and restoration. Continue to follow him and share this good news. Amen. Amen. Let us pass the peace of Christ with one another. You may be seated. Our first reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 5 through 12. And you can find this on page 887 in your pew Bible. The next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they made their prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are being questioned today because of good deeds done to someone who was sick and are being asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you the builders. It has become the cornerstone. <clears throat> there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. God bless the reading of the scripture.
Could I have the children? Could I have the children come up for a children's story? Good morning. How are you all this morning? I wanted to ask you a question. Have you ever been? You okay, Katie? You want to come with me? Can you sit down here? I wanted to ask you all if you've ever been to a farm. What have you seen at a farm? You saw sheep. And who takes horses? Okay. And who takes care of those animals? A shepherd can take care of the animals. On a farm, the farmer. And what do they need to do to help care for the animals? They feed them. What else do they do? Make sure they have water. Okay. And give them shelter. What if there's something that's dangerous for the animals? What would the farmer or the shepherd do? They might fence, yeah. What else could they do? Okay. Be on the lookout. Good. So you were talking about the shepherd, and today um, Pastor Han is going to read a, a passage from the Bible that talks about a very important shepherd. And the shepherd they're going to talk about is Jesus as the good shepherd. And Jesus views all of us that he loves us, and he wants to protect us, and he wants to help us. And so we are part of his flock. And when we are looking to do things, and maybe we're helping a friend at school, or maybe you're picking up your toys, or you're doing some extra things at home, and Jesus is cheering you on, saying those are really good choices, and I'm happy that you're following and being kind the way I want you to be kind. But even when there are times when we maybe make a mistake, and we're not doing as well. Jesus is also there to forgive us and to tell us that he loves us and that he's there still by our side. So today when they're gonna, we're going to read a passage about Jesus as the Good Shepherd. And I think you might be doing something in Sunday school to talk about what Jesus wants you to do in life and to follow Jesus. Okay, does that sound like a good idea, Katie? Yeah? All right, let's pray. What? You did go to, and what animals do they have at Butternut Farm, Katie? Do they have some goats? Some chickens? Okay. Ooh, okay. Oh, so you all know about taking care of things that we love. Okay, so let's, let us pray. Let's put our hands together and pray. Dear God, thank you for teaching us about Jesus. Help us to remember that Jesus loves us and wants to help guide us and wants to be there when we stumble, that he would be always with us. Help us to do as Jesus would want us to do. Amen.
have a little singer here <laughs> singing along. <laughs> oh, the gospel lesson this morning is the gospel written for us by John, chapter 10, verses 11 to 18, and which can be found in your pew Bible, page 872, and we are going to read it together. The whole thing together. Please join with me. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. A higher hand runs away because a higher hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this world. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. your spirit, O oh God, that we may be led by Jesus, our Good Shepherd. Amen. So we had this event of eclipse, right? So I'm curious what you did on the day of eclipse or during that event. Can you turn to your neighbor and share what you did? Just briefly, just talk to your neighbor and you know, share what you did. <laughs> event can generate variety of versions of stories, right? You know, um, I have a colleague who's in Holton, Maine, and they plan for this eclipse event. I mean, there are so many people who came from out of state, you know, out of town to see this event, and they had this entire, like, festivity, you know, around the town. And then that day I had a meeting with my mentor, mentee, 
um, at five o'clock, and I asked her, what did you do? Did you see Eclipse? And she said, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, an event can be, you know, something just wonderfully important, and you get so excited, and for some people, careless, right? You know, that can happen, and that experience, you know, can be life-changing, and that experience can just goes away without knowing, you know. I hope she can be a little more interested in tw 20 years, you know, next 20 years. The event of Jesus' death on the cross generated so many different versions of stories in people's lives. You got to hear, listen to what Paul read this morning, that there's a uh, plenty of leaders, um, both Roman, you know, govern, governor, governing leaders and also Jewish uh, religious leaders, authority, they thought that Jesus' death on the cross was the end of the book, of the biography of Jesus. They thought by having him die on the cross as a criminal, punishing him, and burying him and seal his tomb was the end of the story of this Jesus who self-claimed the Messiah, who got so popular and who got, you know, whose name was known to so many people. His deeds, his preaching, his teaching, and his life itself had so much impact on people's lives. But they wanted to keep their status quo. They wanted to own their power that was threatened by Jesus. And they wanted to remove that, get rid of him, so that they can keep their status quo. They can keep their power and authority over people. They didn't know what God was doing through Jesus. And that, just sealing him in the tomb will remove the whole story about Jesus in town. And that's why they're asking Peter and John who were arrested for healing the, the lame beggar Right? You know, they were arrested for bringing new life to this person. And these people have no idea where this power come from. Where does this power of healing come from? Isn't Jesus dead? He's gone? And his power doesn't exist anymore? So they're asking them, in whose name and what power are you doing this? They're thinking like, is there another Messiah coming up? Do we need to put him to death as well? And then Peter says, the one that you put to death, the one, the stone that you rejected, you could have built something upon that rock. You rejected him and on which God is building a new movement of the Holy Spirit. So this story of Jesus who died on the cross has been transformed, transformed into the story of God's new life, 
God's complete salvation. People thought that this is the end of Jesus' biography, but the disciples said that, no, this is a new chapter in the same book, and this book will never end. You know, we have this Paschal candle, right? You know, this is called Paschal candle. And Paschal candle symbolizes the core of our faith in Jesus Christ, which is called Paschal mystery. In that Paschal mystery, there is a paradox. The paradox is Jesus is not only the Passover lamb who will bear all the sins of the people and then die, sacrifice himself, just like he said in, um, in John's passage, he laid down his life for the benefit and love of the sheep. Right, so that's what Passover lamb does. And that's exactly what John said, look, the lamb of God. And yet, the Passover lamb doesn't have any willful understanding that he is taking all the burdens of sin for the people. And this Passover lamb will die and never come back to life. But Jesus is not only Passover lamb in this Paschal mystery, he is also the risen Lord and he is also the shepherd. He is both a lamb and the shepherd. And that's the paradox that we believe, that's the transformation that we believe in the, the event of the cross and the resurrection. Jesus willfully laid his life down and then he had the power to come back to life, to give us new life. And that's the transformation that we experience and that's why that story of Jesus on the cross and his resurrection is still powerful in people's lives. They experience transformation continuously because the main message, the core of this message is God will not let the death despair and suffering to be the ending note in our life. God will always turn this around and around and transform them into the story of healing, story of comfort, story of love, story of restoration, story of reconciliation, story of wholeness. No matter how long it feels like you're in there, God is forever moving you to that direction. That's the Paschal mystery. We find suffering to be difficult to bear, but at the end of suffering, there's always new life. That there's always transformation that is waiting to happen. So I'm wondering, what story do you tell yourself and others lately? What is the story of something that's waiting to be transformed? Something that makes you feel like you're in the belly of the shadow of death. That makes you feel like you're stuck in a rabbit hole. That makes you feel like 
there's no hope in this. It seemed like you are stuck in the tomb and sealed. I'm sure we all have at least one story of that, whether you tell yourself or look at the world and say, like, this is really bad. This is a valley of the shadow. So now I'm going to ask you to turn to your neighbor again and share just briefly what's the story of the valley? What's the story of the shadow lately that you tell yourself or tell others? This is, this is why we um, encourage you to sit close to each other. <laughs> Richard Rohr, who is a Franciscan priest, um, who is a well-known wisdom bearer of our time, um, says that we're all addicted. The people who live in this postmodern world were all addicted. Addicted to the pattern of our thoughts, the mind, how our mind works. We're, in a sense, stuck or trapped in the way we see things, interpret things, and allow ourselves in the story with the same pattern. And there's only one way that we can come out of this is by the grace of God, of course, but willingness to look deeply where this story comes from and then have courage to break away from it and creating a new life-giving storyline. In other words, if we keep looking at the world, let's say that you know the pattern of your mind or your thought process is constantly blaming other people for something happening or victimizing ourselves or seeing it as absolutely unresolvable. Seeing it as there's no hope, there's no solution. You know, we have this pattern that we keep actually seeking for what will reinforce that pattern. That's what addiction means. Like you keep looking for something that will reinforce what you are thinking. And what you're thinking may not be life-giving, may not lead you to the green pastures and still waters, but constantly lead you to the valley of the shadow of death. 
we're called to open the tomb and then bring Jesus out because he will not let you stay there. He will not let you stay in the same pattern of thinking or behaving that is not life-giving. If we stay there, if we do not try to come out of it, we're staying in the tomb. We're not letting Jesus come into our hearts and into our lives. So think about what stories that you repeatedly say to yourself that are waiting to be transformed, waiting to be liberated, and waiting to make you walk to the green, green uh, pastures and still waters, being led by God's rod and staff. In every story, there is a seed of transformation that will bring you to closer to Christ. And that's exactly why that the event of cross, event of the cross happened to keep you closer to God and bring you healing and wholeness so that you will be the people of God's transforming power and presence. Tell your story of transformation to the world and make sure you yourself live with the liberating power of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together the hymn number 707, Hymn of Promise.
Please be seated. The prayer requests are made for Wade Jones, Diane's grandson, uh, who who tore his ACL in a lacrosse game and who needs surgery soon. Uh, please keep him in your prayer. Also, Leo Rankins on hospice care. Uh, this is Robbie Miles' girlfriend's great-grandfather, I think. Um, and prayers for Barry uh, Nation with multiple health issues. Um, and he is one of the judges for photography shows. So we need to pray for healing. Um, we also lift up for the families that need reconciliation. <coughs> also celebration and prayer of thanksgiving for Anthony DeVito having birthday today. Happy birthday to him, blessings. Let us sing together the hymn number 2157, Come and Feel Our Hearts. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for gathering us in this sacred place where you have called us to be a family, continuing to tell the story of transformation from death to life, from the cross to the empty tomb, from mere earthly existence to an abundant life both on earth and in heaven. We thank you for transforming us from individual believers into a community of faith, enabling us to catch glimpses of your kingdom among us, and empowering us to be instruments of healing and wholeness. We're grateful for your abiding presence and steadfast love, which continually transforms our stories, lifting us out of the tomb and into a new and vibrant life. And we give you thanks. God, we witness the signs of new life in this Easter season. And we are also mindful of the many people living in the valleys of the shadow of death, both within our own land and around the world. We place our trust in you, O God, the God of love, God of peace, God of justice and reconciliation. We ask that you turn the hearts of people, especially the leaders of nations, embroiled in war and conflict, to be guided by your spirit. 
protect the innocent people from the dangers and threats of daily life and provide them abundantly. Transform their stories of despair into the stories of hope. Send your Holy Spirit to inspire us to recognize how we can be your instruments of healing and agents of peace restoration. We rejoice in you for all the prayers answered and give thanks to you, O God. And we continue to lift up our prayers for those who are in need of your healing and strength, balance and wholeness. Jesus, our Good Shepherd, protect them and comfort them with your rod and staff and lead them to green pastures and still waters for rest and renewal. Be with us as this week we have many planned events beginning after the service, our casserole fellowship, and spring reading on spirituality and the cleanup on Saturday and Parsonage Open House on Sunday and preparation for photography show and the spring fair. We will do our best and we trust that you will do the rest. Oh God, grant us the courage of Peter that we may boldly proclaim Christ as the foundation of our faith, of our church, of our lives, and of the world. We pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. service with the presentation of our tithes and offerings.
Generous God, we acknowledge all the gifts and blessings that come from you, and we give you thanks. And we express our gratitude through these offerings, giving cheerfully and willfully. Bless them and transform them into the seeds of love and hope to be planted in your people so that they may bear abundant fruit. Amen. Our hymn of dedication is How Farm a Foundation, number 529. Or if there's a date, 
um, period of time that it's written. Also, there's these wonderful things called prayers. And it's not just from the Wesleys, it's from uh, different churches, the Church of South Africa, the Church of England, the Lutheran Church. So there's so many resources in here for your own personal devotions that I encourage you to freely take one of these home. Not the ones that are in the pews right now. <laughs> Thank you. And if you know someone who's worshiping at home, um, you can take one for them as well. Casseroles, anyone? <laughs> Please come down to the fellowship hall. Um, I loved Eliza in the back um, responding to the choir. When the choir sang forever, she would go, ah, and then <laughs> forever, and she would go another, ah. It's amazing how these children bring us so much vibrance in our life, in our life of a congregation. And thank you so much for being gracious and patient as well. As we go forth in peace, <coughs> let us remember all our stories are stories of transformation when Jesus is out of the tomb and come into our lives. So go continue to tell the stories of transformation of Jesus Christ and transform the world in his name. May the blessing of God, the Almighty, the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen.